Fire when ready. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. So, what if Hydra won in Captain America the Winter Soldier? This what if video is not going to go in the direction you're thinking. The age of Hydra is going to be really different. There are going to be Skrulls, Ultron's part of it, and even Killmonger. What's up? This alternate timeline will even have the Dark Avengers and some other major surprises. So in 2014, Captain America discovered that Hydra had infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. and they were planning to bring their new world order with Project Insight. Three helicarriers are about to eliminate any threats to Hydra. And in the very last second before 20 million people were killed, Steve Rogers inserted the chip that granted the heroes full control over the helicarriers, thus stopping Hydra's attack and saving millions. But what if Steve was too late? What if the Winter Soldier shot Steve just before he placed that chip? What if Hydra commenced the attack and eliminated all their threats, including the Avengers? How different would this reality be if Hydra had won and the majority of the heroes were dead? And could Hydra have defeated Thanos? It is time to ponder the question, what if Hydra won? Hey, Hydra. <laughs> It's 2014, three helicarriers are in the air, linked by a satellite targeting threats to Hydra. Threats that were identified by Arnim Zola's algorithm. These new long-range precision guns can eliminate a thousand hostiles a minute. The satellites can read a terrorist's DNA before he steps outside his spider hole. The attack is about to commence. On one of the helicarriers, Steve crawls toward the control panel. He must place the control chip. This will allow Maria Hill to stop the attack. Steve was shot multiple times by the Winter Soldier. There are only a few seconds left before the attack starts. He reaches to insert the chip. He's about to do it, and he gets shot again by the Winter Soldier. Steve can't get up. It's too late. Time runs out. The three helicarriers open fire. One by one, people start dying. It's like the snap, but with bullets. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. Inside the Triskelion, Maria Hill is shot by a high-precision bullet, and she is dead. Standing right next to Nick Fury, Natasha Romanoff turns to Red Mist. Black Widow is dead. In the Avengers Tower, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, both dead. Clint Barton is with his family, dead. Just like that, three core members of the Avengers are gone. Bruce Banner, shot, but might not be dead. Rhodey is on a mission, shot out of the sky, dead. Stephen Strange, who was a target even before he became a sorcerer, dead. Hank Pym in his house, dead. Jane Foster, dead. Phil Coulson, who by the way survived Loki stabbing him apparently, dead. His Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. team, also dead. President Matthew Ellis, dead. They're dead, they're all dead! Over 700,000 people die in an instant. This is only the beginning. Hydra is planning to kill around 20 million people to achieve their better world. I can bring order to the lives of seven billion people by sacrificing 20 million. But there are some survivors. Hydra attempted to fire on Wakanda, but its force shield stopped the attack. Thor was dating Jane Foster after the events of the Dark World. However, at the time of the attack, he was off world. So Thor is unaware that the woman he loves is now dead. Sam Wilson survived the attack. He was fighting Rumlow. When the attack started, Rumlow took his eyes off the prize, watching the helicarriers fire their shots, giving Sam enough time to escape. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Nick Fury also survived the attack. His name was removed from the kill list since he was considered dead at the time after faking his death before. So Fury is actually still alive, but his whole world crumbles around him. In his anger, Fury kills Alexander Pierce. So if one of Hydra's top leaders is dead, but as the Hydra saying goes, Hail Hydra. No, 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 the other one. They cut off one head, two more shall take its place. Oh, you're right, that's a much better cutaway clip. Well, I didn't see you coming up with any cutaway clips, stupid little fake Doug. Ah, uh, Doug, be nice to the Doug, the manager plush. By the way, guys, we are selling these things in partnership with Makeship. We're doing a fundraiser. I think we have like a week left on this. So we only have one week if you want to get your very own Doug, the manager plush. We have links to that below and also links to our merch store where we design the merch ourselves. You guys continuously help us run this channel. We've wanted to make plushies for a long time. We're finally able to do it. This is not a sales tactic. The window closes pretty soon in like eight days-ish. So if you're wanting to get one of these, time is running out. Yeah, get one now so it won't be here around me anymore. I hate it. Now, back to what I was saying. Bruce Banner is shot, but you can't kill him with a bullet, even if it's a super bullet. And the other guy spit it out. Now there's more to it, but let's just say the Bruce was captured by Hydra for now. So Hydra has won, so now what happens? Hydra takes over the world and becomes an empire? Well, you'd think that could happen, but this is not where this what if is going. Hydra wants world dominance, that much is clear. However, much has changed since the days the Red Skull was their leader. Since then, Hydra shed its affiliation with the Nazis and they even strayed away from the Red Skull's ideology. 
They infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. and other government agencies, grew like a parasite, corrupting the system from within. For 70 decades, HYDRA stayed in the shadows. They pulled the strings, influencing the world without anyone knowing about them. Humanity needed to surrender its freedom willingly. Project Insight was a great victory for them. However, there are still many threats out there. Aliens, magic users, godlike beings who cannot be taken down as easily as these mere mortals. There are also powerful nations like Wakanda that pose a huge threat to Hydra's new world order. And then there are other worlds, an entire universe filled with threats. To step out of the shadows now will mean a long war to conquer the world. Why should they fight Thor and Hawk when they can use them to fight their enemies for them? Keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Their new leader sees the big picture and seeks a new kind of world dominance. Now, in The Winter Soldier, Black Widow leaked all of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secrets online, including the existence of HYDRA. However, in this timeline, the upload of this information was blocked and purged by HYDRA's new leader. So who's their new leader? All will be revealed in a moment. Hydra blames the Project Insight Massacre on a common enemy, an alien race that's hiding among humans. Aliens that can shapeshift and look like anyone. Scrolls. Person, I did not see that coming. Thank you kindly. And now, things get interesting. This is where the fun begins. Now, they are a display shapeshifting alien race, and some of them lived on Earth since the 1990s. Nick Fury and Captain Marvel promised they would find them a home, while the Skrulls would work as Fury shapeshifting spies. Naturally, it was a super-duper secret spy network. But Hydra found out, and now they're using this secret to blame the Skrulls for the attack that killed so many people. They claim that the aliens infiltrated every level of the infrastructure, including S.H.I.E.L.D. and the government, and even the Avengers themselves. They turned Project Insight against humanity, and this is their first attack in their secret invasion. And their story is that Nick Fury opened the door for the Skrulls, that he betrayed humanity. He's even married to a Skrull, for crying out loud. Traitor! Now, ironically, there weren't even that many scrolls on Earth in 2014. It's an easy lie to sell to the public. And after 700,000 people died, people are angry. They need someone to blame, and they want someone to make them feel safe. And shape-shifting aliens are easy prey for prejudice and hate. Humanity is finally ready to sacrifice its freedom to gain its security. This allows Hydra to deploy their troops all over the United States as they hunt down the scrolls. They control the military, the government, even the media. And over the time, this reliance on security will evolve into complete obedience and collaboration. So this is how liberty dies. The next generations will grow with the Hydra virus in their minds. The age of Hydra has begun. Hail Hydra! All right, all right, put your arms down, Kaminsky. Look like a West Texas cheerleader at a pep rally. And all of this is possible thanks to Hydra's new leader. Okay, so here's the new leader. Tell us now. So, remember Arnim Zola? Oh, yeah, the computer guy, yeah. I am Swiss. He worked under the Red Skull during World War II. After his capture, he was recruited by S.H.I.E.L.D., and then he began rebuilding Hydra from inside of S.H.I.E.L.D. And don't forget, he was responsible for Bucky becoming the Winter Soldier. After his death, he was put inside a computer. In the computer. Now, in this timeline, though, Zola's story is different. You see, after the Battle of New York, Hydra got their hands on the Mind Stone, which was hidden inside Loki's scepter. Baron Strucker harnessed the stone's energy to create his miracles. However, Strucker also discovered the dense net of neurons inside the stone, and he was experimenting with artificial intelligence. Strucker's lab, I saw some fairly advanced robotics work. Artificial intelligence. Strucker couldn't crack the creation of the AI on his own, so he uploaded Zola to the mainframe. Zola combined himself with the Mind Stone. Zola became Hydra in its truest form. His digital tentacles are spread all across the net. You destroy one of his drones and two more shall take its place. And this is how Zola discovered the scrolls. But that's not all. Zola builds himself a robotic body like Ultron's. Zola basically took over Hydra. He calculated that once Hydra takes over the world, the organization would eat itself from the inside, since they will all want power. They're like the Sith. Always do there are. And so Zola takes control, ensuring that everybody will follow his lead. Hey, person, is this video becoming What If Ultron was created by Hydra? Uh, well, no, not exactly. Ultron is a peacekeeping program that went rogue. Zola uploaded his consciousness into a computer, so while he is an AI, he's still kind of technically human. Don't get technical with me. Hydra confiscates Stark's tech so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands, and then they use Tony's work to give Hydra a major upgrade. Hydra also hires Ulysses Claw and starts creating weapons and armor with vibranium. But he needs more than that. He needs superhumans. Since he's connected to the Mind Stone sentience, Zola successfully gives Wanda and Pietro powers much sooner than Strucker did. Well, I guess in Wanda's case, he unlocks her power sooner. But there is a catch. The Maximoffs joined Hydra only because they wanted revenge against Tony Stark. Well, now Tony's dead. But Zola is a super AI, and he manipulates the twins to work as heroes for Hydra, to be the heroes of Sokovia, and finally to liberate their country from oppression. Ironic. 
And with this, Zola begins building a team of superhumans, just like the Avengers, but dark. So remember I said that Bruce Banner was shot but not killed? Yeah, so what happened to him? Well, he's still alive. He hawked out, but Zola was ready for it, and they captured the Hulk. Now, after Wanda gets her powers, she uses her mind-controlling abilities to sedate and control the green monster. For now, the Hulk is out of the picture, but not for long. Speaking of mind-controlled super people... Yeah, what about Bucky? He finally gets his shield and becomes the new Captain America, right? Actually, Bucky stays the Winter Soldier. Hydra needs its secret super assassin even in this new world order. But what about Captain America? Well, Bucky can't be the Cap since the old Cap is actually still around. What? That's right, Steve didn't die. He was mortally wounded, but Hydra patched him up. You know, the Hydra way. Steve is then brainwashed by Wanda, and Steve becomes Captain Hydra. Well, to the public, he's still Captain America, but in secret... Hail Hydra. So how could the world mistrust the new regime when Captain America is their hero? Now while all this happens, Brock Rumlow, aka Crossbones, becomes the new head of S.H.I.E.L.D. Rumlow gets an Iron Man suit and he becomes the new Hydra Patriot. Bucky also gets a new supervillain suit, but that's a secret for now. Rumlo releases Emil Blonsky from prison, and the Abomination joins these Hydra Avengers. Hydra then recruits the Ten Rings. Why would they work with Hydra? Well, Wen Wu might not share Hydra's worldview, but the Ten Rings are a terrorist organization. They had been associated with many bad groups over the centuries. And Wen Wu figures if you can't beat them, join them. And before you ask, Shang-Chi is 14 in 2014, so he can't do much at this point. I feel old. So, while Hydra builds their better world, there are still some good guys. Nick Fury survived Project Insight, even though he's public enemy number one, after Hydra framed him for the attack. So, he is in hiding, and obviously, Fury calls Carol Danvers. And while Captain Marvel is making her way to Earth, Fury assembles a new Avengers team for her. The trouble is that there are barely any superheroes left in the world. But I could lead them. Liar! And some of them didn't even become superheroes yet, like Spider-Man or Ant-Man. Peter Parker was only bitten by the radioactive spider in late 2015. And Scott Lang is currently serving time in a state penitentiary. Now since Sam is alive, he joins the team without question. Wait a minute, person. Wouldn't the algorithm eliminate Sam since he is a threat? Yeah, but we gotta leave some characters alive, otherwise the story wouldn't be interesting at all. So, let's just say the algorithm like missed a few, like Hope Van Dyne. With her father killed, she becomes the Wasp and joins Fury's team. Fury recruits Daredevil because, you know, why the heck not? And Moon Knight also joins the team. For reasons only known to him, Khonshu decides to interfere and sends Mark Spector to fight Hydra. Now, this might be out of character for the Moon God, but, yeah, why not? It's fun. There were criminals, murderers, predators, the worst of the worst. Khonshu wanted them punished. But this team is outmatched and outgunned by Hydra's team. Luckily, they got the thunder. Thor has returned to Earth. The woman he loves has been murdered, so it's hammer in time. So while all of that happens, in Kamartaj, Wong asks the Ancient One if the masters of the mystic arts should get involved with this conflict. The Ancient One decides that they must sit this one out. But why? Well, things are really bad, but they could get much worse. The sacred duty of the sorceress is to defend reality against threats like Dormammu. Now, she placed all her stacks on Stephen Strange becoming the Sorcerer Supreme, but now he's dead, so all of her plans are in turmoil. Now, let's switch to Wakanda. Like the Ancient One, T'Chaka decides to stay out of the conflict. Their shield dome protects them, and as king, he must protect his nation from the outside world. So, just like for all previous world conflicts, it's best to keep Wakanda's power a secret. T'Challa wants to do the right thing, but he is forced to obey his father. However, that changes when a stranger appears on Wakanda's border. Is it him? Killmonger's in this story too? Oh yeah, Killmonger has arrived. Oh my god, okay, it's happening! Eric and T'Challa meet, and he reveals that Hydra is taking over the world. Now, Eric has some history with them, so he knows what they're planning, and he is certain Wakanda can stop them. But look, T'Challa's no fool. He knows there's something off about a cousin he never knew about, appearing out of nowhere, telling him that Wakanda must fight. Still though, T'Challa lets Eric in, and that proves to be a colossal mistake. Killmonger slips away the first chance he gets, and he immediately bolts to the control room that operates Wakanda's shield. And then he lowers the shield. Hydra shows up and attacks. What? Killmonger was with Hydra? Yes, he made a deal with them, just like with Wen Wu. And the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Under Hydra's new world order, he gets to rule Wakanda. Eric is convinced that once he's king, he can overthrow Hydra and conquer the world for himself. Hydra's Avengers arrive. The team includes a brainwashed Captain America, Wanda, Pietra, Rumlow is the Hydra Patriot, Abomination, Win Wu, and Killmonger. Bucky is also there, but he remains hidden. He's got his own mission. Black Panther leads Wakanda against the Hydra army, but with all their power and tech, they face a powerful team of superhumans. However, hope isn't lost yet because the new Avengers arrive. Or where's Captain Marvel? Stuck in space traffic. The whole world might be ending, but Carol, you know, she needs her dramatic entrance. The new Avengers and the Hydra Avengers clash on the battlefield. Black Panther fights Captain America. Thor goes after Abomination. Falcon squares off with the Hydra Patriot. Moon Knight fights Wen Wu. Wasp and Okoye team up against Wanda and Pietro. Daredevil and Killmonger have a badass hand-to-hand -hand fight. Eric doesn't have powers yet, so Matt can actually hold his own. 
T'Challa almost naturally takes his place as leader of the New Avengers. Now, while the heroes have a Thor, it's not enough, and the heroes are overwhelmed from every direction. But then, the sky lights up and a star smashes into the bad guys like a meteor. Captain Marvel has arrived. Ironically though, this battle is merely a distraction. Zola wants Wakanda removed from the board, and now, this is his chance to eliminate the remaining threats to Hydra. So he unleashes his super weapon, the Hulk. And remember, Hulk is under mind control, so with the shields down, he goes on a furious rampage in Wakanda, destroying anything and anyone in his path. Thor immediately goes after Hulk. Carol is about to join him, but she is stopped by Wanda. Thor tries to lullaby Hulk. The sun's getting real low. But the monster is in full rage mode. So Thor must unleash his full power on his friend like there is no other choice. They don't hold back, and this time it is a battle to the death. The fight is so destructive that they destroy half of Wakanda, and the other half isn't going much better since Carol is fighting Wanda. Now, Wanda is very powerful. However, Carol can easily match her at this point, since this is a pre-Scarlet Witch Wanda Maximoff. Pietro runs to save his sister, but Carol hits him out of the way. And somehow, this attack kills Pietro. Uh, not again. Carol wasn't trying to kill Pietro, but she did. But you see, this was part of Zola's plan. He knew Wanda's true potential, and he calculated that the only way for her to reach full power was the death of the only person she actually cared about. Zola recruited Darren Cross to Hydra. Now, in this timeline, Cross created the Yellow Jacket suit much sooner because Hydra stole Pym's tech. But here's the twist. This isn't Cross in the Yellow Jacket suit. It is Bucky. A tiny Winter Soldier? Exactly. Commando! Bucky basically used the shrinking tech to stop Pietro's heart on cue as Carol hit him. Now Wanda doesn't know she's a magical girl, but in her rage, she unleashes her inner Scarlet Witch. She unloads all of her chaos magic on Carol. Captain Marvel might be a godlike cosmic being, but so much dark energy is way too much even for her, and Scarlet Witch simply disintegrates Carol Danvers. Captain Marvel is dead. Oh man, this is turning into a Zack Snyder movie again. Oh yeah, because on the other side of the battlefield, Hulk unleashes his fury on Thor. The God of Thunder is in serious trouble and he cannot beat Hulk. Oh, uh, what? He's moments away from dying. He can feel his life force slipping away. So with no other choice, Thor throws Mjolnir with all the thunder left inside of him. The momentum and force send Hulk into the air. The hammer pushes him out of Earth's orbit. Hulk and Mjolnir continue accelerating in the vacuum of space, flying like a comet out to the great unknown. After this, Thor falls down, his life force depletes, and he dies. No! And with that, the two heavy hitters are dead. The heroes are crushed. Wakanda burns. Before the rest join their fate, a portal opens up and Wong appears. Now, he was sent there by the Ancient One. She made an oath to stay out of the battle. However, she can no longer watch all of this senseless death, not if she can do something about it. So she sends Wong to help the remaining heroes retreat. There's always hope. The battle is over, Hydra has won, and Wakanda no longer poses a threat to the rising empire. Killmonger is about to grace the throne with his butt, but then he gets hit by a laser beam. Zola arrives and kills Killmonger. He did what? Zola knew that Eric could not be trusted. Wakanda isn't part of his algorithm for the future. He plans to mine every piece of vibranium and start building an army of space robots. A legion that will conquer the entire galaxy, and then maybe even the universe. Until then, Hydra continues with her propaganda, growing like a parasite within society. Cut to the Sanctum Sanctorum where the heroes are on the brink. They now have no idea how they can defeat Hydra. But the Ancient One introduces the new Avengers to a flying man with wings on his feet. Namor made a deal with the Ancient One and with Nick Fury. After he saw what happened in Wakanda, he understands the Talakan, his underwater kingdom, and his people are next. So Namor joins the team. The new Avengers assemble for the battle that will determine the fate of the world. Cut to space. On Vormir, Red Skull is about to greet a new visitor to his planet. Now before he can play that Who's Your Daddy game, Welcome, Thanos, son of Alas. Tasha, daughter of Ivan. He realizes that his visitor isn't sentient, it's a machine. Zola has sent his Iron Legion to space, and one of them arrives on Vormir. Zola tells Red Skull about his achievements, and Red Skull is so happy that his imprisonment is going to finally end, and he can return and rule Hydra and achieve his final glory. Dead Skull. Red Skull should have been nicer back during World War II. Then the Sentry is joined by a couple more people who brought Shuri and Ramonda. Shuri is under mind control by Wanda and she is forced to throw her mom off the cliff. Well now that is some f 
Oh, shit. Yeah, person, I think you need to talk to someone after this. There, there is something really wrong with you. Dude, it's the darkest timeline. What do you want from me? So Zola gets the Soul Stone, and he also has the Mind Stone. Two down, four more to go. And speaking of the Infinity Stones, the Space Stone is no longer on Asgard. Odin was exiled by Loki to Earth, and he was stripped of his godly powers. Now, after Thor died, Odin couldn't take it, and he faded into space dust. On Asgard, Loki drops the act, and he is about to wage war on Earth to avenge his brother and father's deaths. However, Odin dying means one thing. Hela. She is free from her prison and Hela takes over Asgard. And then she makes an alliance with Hydra. Hela wants to rule the Nine Realms, but working with Hydra suits her at this point. Loki teleports away with the Space Stone before she gets to him. But Loki doesn't go to Earth. He goes to the one guy in the universe who can deal with Hydra and Hela. Loki goes to Thanos. He offers the Space Stone and the location of the Reality Stone in exchange for Thanos helping Loki avenge his loved ones. The real endgame is about to begin. In space, the recently assembled Guardians of the Galaxy stumble on a strange comet, but it's not a comet, it's the Hulk. Now, he is no longer under mind control, but he's real pissed off, and he knows that he has to smash Hydra. However, there's one thing missing. Mjolnir is nowhere in sight. It flew off of him a while back. Well, where did it go? To Earth. You see, it was summoned. But who? Thor's dead, Jane's dead. Who is still worthy? Well, here's the final twist. During the Battle of Wakanda, during the fight between Carol and Wanda, they discharge so much cosmic energy, and that kicks Steve out of his mind control. So Steve is no longer longer under Hydra's influence, but now he's a double agent. And he revealed himself to be a double agent. He pretends to be part of Hydra, but in secret, he is called to Mjolnir. And now the hammer is making its way back to Earth, ready to fly into Captain America's hand to bestow upon him the power of Thor. And this is where the story ends for now. I spent years hunting people Hydra recruited to recreate the serum. Because once it's out there, someone can create an army of people like the Avengers. What a cliffhanger. I know, right? All right, guys, did you like that what if? Would you like to see more? Would you want us to continue the story? What other what ifs would you like to see? Let us know down in the comments. And big shout out to the writer and editor of this video, Mr. Pavel T. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.